It's a mailbag Friday on the podcast, answering se several of your questions and some really hard ones, including who would you choose to start a franchise with, Michael Harris, Spencer Strider, or Vaughn Grissom? A lot of great questions and some tough, tough questions for me to answer on today's episode of Locked On Brave. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we're covering your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Sports Atlanta over on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. I also am the co-editor over at tomahawktake.com where I write about the Braves, where you can check that out as well. And also make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button and notification bell as it does support the show as well. Also leave a comment. Enjoy the discussions down in the comment sections on YouTube. Great chance to interact with the listeners. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first to listen each and every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Today's episode going to answer a lot of your questions that you had on Twitter. As I mentioned in the uh, the intro, a lot of really tough questions. So I'm really looking forward to this episode. Thank you all as always for submitting those question, questions. Uh, we'll also end it uh, with a question about the Cardinals and Braves series coming up. But I really want to preview that series, kind of dive into it. A couple of hot teams going up against each other. I think it'll be a very good and telling series this weekend. Uh, quickly on Thursday, the Mets did beat the Rockies 3-1 to one as they had Jacob deGrom on the mound. So the NL East deficit for the Braves goes back to two games as we enter this weekend. Mets have three more games against the Rockies. Braves obviously with three against the Cardinals. Well, let's jump into the questions. Like I said, some really tough ones here. And this one will be the toughest of the all. Of all. This one coming from L. Wundy who said, if you had to choose one player to base your team around, who would it be between Vaughn Grissom, Spencer Strider, and Michael Harris? This is not fair, and thankfully the Braves don't have to make that decision. They get all three of these guys, but who would you base your team around if it had to be one of these three players? For me, I take Grissom out of this discussion. He may be the best all I don't want to say all I think he may be the better hitter between Harris uh, and Grissom. But to me, because Harris is a more well-rounded player and you know he's going to give you gold glove defense, you know he has the speed to steal 20, 30 bases, I think that outweighs what Grissom perhaps gives you. I mean, Grissom doesn't really even have a position right now at this moment. So I think you have to give Harris the nod over there between those two hitters. So to me, it comes down to Harris and Spencer Strider. And this is a tough one. It's a really, really tough call because, you know, in the offseason, I had these two guys one and two on my prospect rankings. I'm very high. I was very high on Michael Harris, have been for a couple of years. And I was very high on Spencer Strider this offseason when not a lot of rankings out there were because I feel like he had ace type potential and i feel like he has that mindset and i think he's smart knows how to pitch uh, i really just think that highly of him that i think he has ace potential and that's hard and very rare rare to come by to find somebody of that caliber in the starting rotation you know we talked about max free the other day how the braves have been searching for that ace for so many years really since probably john smoltz uh, maybe tim hudson there for a little bit but they really been searching for that ace and they don't come by very easily. And I think Spencer Strider has the possibility of, of becoming that type of pitcher. That being said, 
I think I'm going to have to go with Harris. If you're building a team around, you know, one player, this is your cornerstone piece. I feel like it has to be a position player, even though I feel like Strider may have a little bit more potential and upside in terms of you know, perhaps maybe being a Cy Young candidate one day. I don't know that Harris ever reaches MVP level. You know, I don't put him on the same status of an Acuna. You know, I think Acuna could win an MVP one day, maybe a couple of MVPs one day. I don't necessarily think Harris reaches that, but I do think Harris is a, you know, a multiple, you know, all-star type performer. And again, just all the things that he gives you. And now he's showing that power as well, showing you that he could be a 20 plus home run bat. That was really the last tool for him that he really needed. He has everything else, defense, the arm, he hits for average you know, the speed. So, I mean, he has everything else. We were all just, we were just waiting on that power for him to become a five tool player. So that's why I would, I would choose Harris there just because I think you have to take the position player. Uh, if you're building a team around somebody, I think you want to build it around a position player. So I'd go with Harris, but it's a tough choice. And again, all three, you know, are great and they all three play for the Braves. So they don't have to make this decision, but let me know down in the comments, who would you pick? I think that's a really great question. Really fun debate. And again, it's fun because, you know, the Braves don't have to make it and they get all three of those guys. Next question comes from Sean Barry. He says, what other pitch do you think Ian Anderson needs to add to help him be more effective? Could he learn a pitch in a few weeks that's good enough for big league hitting? I'm going to answer the second question first. No, I don't think he can learn a new pitch in a few weeks. I think he can continue to develop his curveball while he's down at Gwinnett and continue to make that better so that when he comes back up, it's a more effective pitch with him. But in terms of just adding a new pitch and having that ready and being able to come back up and you know use that against major league hitters, I don't think that happens this year. But if you're talking about the pitch that he needs to add in order to take that next step, for me, it's the slider. Uh, he, you know, he has that fastball, which is very flat. You know, for one thing, he needs to try to learn to create more spin on that fastball because it's very flat. It plays well off his changeup, but he he does need to create a little bit more spin on that fastball because what we've seen from hitters is they'll spit on that changeup down and they'll look for that fastball up, and that you can crush that fastball because it is so flat. But the reason I think he needs a slider, he needs something of running away from righties, something into lefties. He has that fastball, like I said, that's flat. He has that changeup that dives down into right-handed hitters and away from left-handed hitters. But he really needs something to go the other way. His curveball does that, but it doesn't you know, have the sharp break of a slider. So for me, it's a slider. I, I think he needs to work on that in the offseason. You have some great examples there on your team. You know, Go hit up Spencer Strider and try to learn how to throw a slider. If he can do that, I think that really takes his game to the next level. But he really just needs that other pitch that gives him some horizontal movement running away from right-handed hitters and into left-handed hitters. Another great question there. Next one comes from Chris Shaffey, who says, do you think the Braves keep Charlie Morton, or do you think he retires next season? I think a lot depends on how the rest of this season plays out. The Braves go on and win a World Series, and he gets to you know be more of a part of it this time. I think he rides off into the sunset. I think he's perfectly fine with that. The option, twenty million option, it is a team option, so I guess it's technically up to the Braves. I mean, he Charlie could decide to hang it up, and you know they both just go their separate ways. But it is a team option. I don't think the Braves pick it up at twenty million. I think if anything, the Braves would decline it and maybe try to get him back for a little less, maybe even you know $15 million, uh, which may, may not seem like much in the grand scheme of things, but I don't think they pay him $20 million next year, so I think the Braves decline it, but then maybe try to renegotiate to bring him back for a little bit less. For me, I think it's either Morton comes back and plays for the Braves one more year, or he hangs it up. I don't really see him going anywhere else. Everything you kind of heard when he signed this deal with the Braves is that, you know, he was very close to just kind of hanging things up and going home and very satisfied and content with that. But $20 million is a lot of money. So I understand him wanting to come back. But I think it's either he comes back with the Braves or he hangs it up. And I don't think the Braves pick up that option at $20 million. But again, I do think they try to bring him back for maybe a little bit less than that. 
And again, I think a lot depends on how the rest of the season plays out. It's been a very up and down year for Charlie Morton for sure. And he's getting older. He just, you know, came off a very serious leg injury that he suffered in the world series. So again, I think a lot depends on how the rest of the season plays out, but I don't think the Braves pick up that $20 million option. All right. A lot of great questions left, uh, including who is on your postseason roster and who are your starting pitchers. We'll answer those questions next. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sport wagering information. From live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening. Bet online where the game starts. Continue answering your Twitter questions. This one came in and some DMs from the anonymous who says, maybe next question for next mailbag, does Kyle Wright get 20 wins this year? And as you know, Kyle Wright sitting at 16 wins right now, tied for the National League lead. The last player to win 20 games for the Braves was Russ Ortiz back in 2003. So it's been a while. Obviously, the win stat, you know, not as highly thought of today as back in the day. And pitchers just don't stick around long enough in games to get as many wins as maybe they would have back in the day either. So, you know, you don't see it a ton uh, in today's game, but. Kyle Wright right there at 16 wins. And if he stays, if the Braves stay on rotation, the schedule they have now, you know, there's a potential for him to get seven more starts. I think he at least gets six more. You know, obviously, if my math is correct, he'd have to win four of those to get to 20. Um, still pretty tough. Uh, again, wins aren't aren't easily aren't easy to come by in today's game, but Again, if they stay with the rotation they have now, he would start on August 31st against the Rockies, a very winnable game, winnable opponent. Then he would start again on September 6th against the Oakland Athletics. Again, very winnable game there. Then he's got a couple of hard starts, one September 12th against the Giants, another one September 18th against the Phillies, and then he would face the Phillies again on September 23rd. Then he could end the season against two, you know, again, very winnable opponents with the Washington Nationals on September 28th and then the Miami Marlins on October 4th. So, again, the potential to face four opponents with a winning percentage under 500. So a great opportunity for him to pick up those wins for sure. He can definitely can do it. I think it'll be tough, and I think a lot depends on how the rest of the season plays out. You know, if the Braves fall out of the division race with those last couple of weeks and they have the top wild card spot locked up, which we'll probably know a lot after those two series with the Phillies, you could skip Kyle Wright and honestly Spencer Strider and others try to save some innings on them to keep them rested for the postseason. So, you know, a lot will depend on that and how many more starts Kyle Wright gets. Like I said, there's potential for him to get seven more. I think he at least gets six more. This is obviously... You know, dependent on health, he just had to get skipped not too long ago because of arm fatigue. He's looked great in his two starts back, but certainly an opportunity for that. Look, I'm an old school guy. I still, you know, care about the win statistic. I think it's, you know, a pretty great accomplishment for pitchers to say you went out there and gave your your team a chance to win these many times. You left the game and your team was winning. I think there's still something to that. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into it and that why it's not considered you know an end-all be-all stat in today's game i get that but i think it would still be a really cool accomplishment for kyle Wright if he can get it done next question comes from turner kirby says right now who is your playoff 26 so i'm going to break this down 13 for hitters 13 for pitchers is how brian snicker probably divides it up travis darno william Contreras, matt olson ozzy albies dansby swanson austin riley Eddie Rosario, Michael Harris, Ronald Acuna, Robbie Grossman, Vaughn Grissom. Those are your for sure 11. And then I think it's going to be Adrianza and it's going to be Heredia. Those two guys, they are there. 
if needed. I mean, just they won't be used unless absolutely possible as a pinch runner, you know, a, a defensive replacement for, you know, Heredia, who could you know, do so in left field late in a game. You know, those two aren't bringing a ton of value, but that's what the Braves have right now. Those are, best, those are their best options. Doesn't give you a lot in terms of off the bench, but their lineup's so good, you're not really taking any of these guys out, you know, to platoon them. Maybe Eddie Rosario would be about the only guy you would platoon here, but that'd be my 13. Ozuna's not on my playoff roster at this point. And then my 13 pitchers would be Max Reed, Charlie Morton, Kyle Wright, Spencer Strider, and then Kenley Jansen, Rysel Iglesias, A.J. Minter, Colin McHugh, Dylan Lee, Tyler Matzik. Those are my 10 definite pitchers in the 10 arms I would rely on. The last three spots on the pitching side, I think it'd be a little up for grabs. I think you can get a little um, you know, tricky here. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but I think you maybe put Mike Soroka on there, depending on how he looks and how he comes back. I think you could put Mike Soroka on there. Look, you know, I would trust Mike Soroka to come in in a game and and get you some outs for two or three innings. So I think that's certainly valuable. I think Ian Anderson is on there as well. Look, his postseason pedigree speaks for itself. I think you have to put him on that postseason roster in case you need him to get a start or you know come in as a long reliever. And I think maybe you put Kyle Moeller on there as well. You got a lefty. It gives you another lefty option out of the bullpen. Look, he's been great all year at Gwinnett. He looked great when he came up and made a spot start against the Marlins. So, again, I think you could make this a pretty deep rotation. You put Soroka, Ian Anderson, and Kyle Moeller in there as your last three guys, along with the other guys in the bullpen. Like I'm not going to put Kirby Yates on there. I'm not putting Jackson Stevens on there. I mean, you're just you're not putting those guys on your roster in the postseason. You're not counting on those guys to get you postseason outs. So I'd go with some guys who you trust, some guys you think can get some big outs. And so I'd play around with those last three spots. I'd put Soroka and Ian Anderson and Kyle Muller on there, see if maybe you can get some magic from them in the postseason. I would also be tempted to cut one of those pitchers in the postseason. Look, there's going to be no more saving bullpen arms for the next day. You saw it with Snicker in the postseason last year. It was Matzik, Minter, Jackson, you know, Will Smith. It was those guys every game. That's how it works in the postseason. So there's no bringing in, you know, your your last reliever in a tie game or when you're down by one late. You know, that's not how it works in the postseason. So you're really only going to use those top seven or eight arms so i think you could be you could cut one of those arms and add another bat Braves just don't have many ed Gwinnett right now that you would really feel comfortable with maybe you cut one of those and put ozuna on there as a right-handed bat off the bench that does have some power you know you can maybe do so with with alex dickerson or tyler white uh who they have at Gwinnett right now you know one a lefty one a righty that give you you know, at least some power off the bench if you needed it. But again, I don't think that's necessary. And like I said, the options just aren't really great. That was the one thing that I didn't love at the trade deadline that the Mets did great and the Braves didn't is the Mets got that depth with Tyler Naquin and Daniel Vogelbach and Darren Ruff, and it really just filled out their bench. Braves really weren't able to do that. And so now you're kind of stuck with Adrianza and Heredia at the end of your bench, who again, just really aren't, aren't that useful. Um, they're not going to be used unless absolutely necessary. Uh, so that is the one one thing that really kind of concerns me for this Braves team. But again, their lineup's so good, you're not really pinch hitting for any of those guys in their lineup anyway. So hopefully it's not that big of a deal. Final question kind of goes along with the last one. This one from Josh, Josh Hutchins, who says, would uh, who would you go with as your starting three in the playoffs? I almost think Strider could be a better weapon coming out of the pen, but that's me. This is a tough one. I've gone back and forth on it really all season. Bottom line, I, I think you use Spencer Strider as a starter. You know, the ability for him to dominate a lineup for five or six innings to me, I think is still more valuable than what you could get out of the bullpen for him for, for two innings. Um, you know, in the and in, in the postseason, that dominant st type stuff that he has typically plays up a little bit more. So, I think you keep Strider in the rotation and hope that you get five or six dominant innings out of him. 
And then you turn it over to your bullpen. A, a, a big reason for this is I trust the Braves bullpen. I trust you get it through the sixth inning and you can hand it over to, to mentor Iglesias and Jansen to close things out. So if there was more of a need at the back of that bullpen, then yeah, I, I'd maybe consider, you know, putting Strider back in the bullpen and then maybe, you know, you could use Ian Anderson or Kyle Moeller or perhaps Mike Soroka, you know, as another starter if needed. However, I don't think it's going to matter because I think you're going to use four starters in the in the postseason. So I think you're going to use Freed, Morton, Strider, and Wright. Uh, I think all four of those guys are going to start. So I don't think it's just going to be three. It, it will be in that first round if the Braves do have to play in the wild card round. You know, I think it would go Freed, Morton, and then you'd have to decide between either Strider or Kyle Wright. You know, in that case, in a three-game series, you know, maybe you do put Spencer Strider in the pen, use Kyle Wright as your third starter, and then you got Strider kind of the, an ace in the hole that could come in in any one of those games and pitch two or three innings for you. But, again, it's a, if it's a difficult decision for Brian Snicker, these are some tough questions. But I just think the ability of Spencer Strider and what he's shown us for the most part you know, he's going to give you five or six dominant innings when he goes out there. And I just think, you know, knowing that and knowing how that stuff could play up in the postseason, uh, I just think you wouldn't want to waste that, you know, coming out of the bullpen. You may not know what you need at that point coming out of the bullpen. The game may already be decided. So I'd use him as a starter. But some great questions, some tough questions. I got one more after the break about this Cardinals Braves series. We'll talk about that next. Before we get into the Cardinals a Braves preview for this weekend, just a quick update on Mike Soroka, who I mentioned a minute ago. He'll start for Gwinnett this Saturday. That'll be his third rehab start. Would imagine he's trying to get up to 60-plus pitches, maybe 70, uh, which will be great. If that's the case and everything goes well, you know, we could be talking about him having you know one more start, uh, maybe at the beginning of September, and then maybe we see him up again that first, second week of September if he just does have those four rehab starts. But uh, either way, wish the best for Mike Soroka and just keep an eye out on that Saturday. All right, getting into this preview of the Cardinals and Braves. Got another question. This one from Chris Harder says, with the upcoming series against the Cards, could you compare the hot corners, Riley and Olsen versus Arenado and Goldie? Curious of their specific numbers, how they stack up against each other, and if they are the two best first base third base duos in the league so i'm gonna throw the numbers at you i'm gonna be honest it's not really all that close between the two i do think these are the two best hot corner combos in all of baseball i think that's pretty uh pretty evident but there is a pretty big gap between arenado and goldie and riley and olsen but let's run through the numbers real quickly uh, Riley and Olsen combined for 122 hits on the season. You compare that to 132 hits between Arenado and Goldie. But Riley and Olsen have 88 more at-bats than Arenado and Goldie. And Arenado and Goldie are hitting 319 combined compared to just 267 for Riley and Olsen. You look at doubles, and Riley and Olsen have them here. 73 doubles between the Braves' hot corners and 67 between the Cardinals. But then it's pretty much Cardinals the rest of the way. They got one, one home run edge in home runs, 59 to 58 for the Cardinals duo. RBIs, Goldie and Arenado have 187 to Riley and Olsen's 169. The Cardinals duo also has 104 walks to the Braves duo, just 99. And the Braves guys, as you might imagine, strike out quite a bit more as well. Riley and Olsen combined for 260 strikeouts. That's 130 each while Arenado and Goldie have 169 strikeouts, so almost 100 less strikeouts between Arenado and Goldschmidt. And then Arenado and Goldschmidt have a 990 combined OPS, while the Braves pair has an 867. So, again, both really good, and both are the best hot corner duos in all of baseball, but there's still a pretty wide gap between the Cardinals two and the Braves two. And then there's probably another huge gap after that before you get to the next best first base, third base duo. I mean, you're looking at Vlad Jr. and uh, Chat Matt Chapman. You're looking at Manny Machado and Josh Bell. And Josh Bell hasn't even really 
been in San Diego all year. And then Anthony Rizzo and DJ LeMayhew. Those are the only two pair of first baseman, third baseman that are both top 10 in OPS at the respective positions. But again, none of them are really even on the same level as Riley and Olsen. And honestly, Riley and Olsen aren't really even on the same level of Arenado and Goldie, especially when you throw in defense where both of those guys are gold glovers. I know Matt Olsen's won one in the past, hasn't really played like that this year. And while I do think Riley's defense is underrated, he's certainly not the gold glove caliber type of third baseman that Arenado is. Arenado may be one of the best defensive players of all time. So you throw that all in there, Arenado and Goldschmidt, clearly the best first base, third baseman combo in all of baseball right now. And I think Matt Olson and Austin Riley are clearly second best, but again, I think there's a pretty big, big gap there, but great question. Uh, and it should be fun watching both of those go head to head this weekend. As far as the pitching matchups this weekend, you'll have Spencer Strider versus Jose Quintana on Friday night. Uh, obviously looking for another great start from Spencer Strider. Quintana has been solid. You know what he is. Braves already faced him early this year with the Pirates. He's a good pitcher. He knows how to pitch, but certainly somebody the Braves can get to. And then on Saturday, it's Charlie Morton versus Jordan Montgomery. <laughs> Jordan Montgomery has been unreal since joining the Cardinals in four starts, 25 and two thirds innings, 13 hits, three walks, just one earned run in 24 strikeouts. Hopefully the Braves can break that up, but he has been outstanding since joining the Cardinals and Sunday night baseball you got Jake Odorizzi versus Adam Wainwright this could be a tough one was kind of selfishly hoping that they would push Odorizzi back a day and let Max Freed start as he would still be on his four days rest but sounds like they're going to stick with the rotation the way it is and go with Odorizzi versus Wainwright so let's hope for a lot of runs on Sunday night baseball a couple of key things to watch in this series Albert Pujols to me, is one of the best stories in all of baseball right now and his pursuit of 700 home runs. He's at 693, and he has seven home runs in the month of August. So he does that again in September. Again, if my math is correct, he could get to 700. So something to watch out for. Now, he usually only faces lefties, and the Braves won't be starting any of those, but could have some key matchups late in the game against Dylan Lee, Tyler Matzik, or A.J. Minter. So that could be fun to watch, celebrating the last year of Albert Pujols. And then Paul Goldschmidt, to me, is the clear you know, NL MVP leader right now. I don't think it's really close at the moment. He's going for the triple crown. He's first in batting average. He's second in home runs, two behind Kyle Schwarber, and he's first in RBI, one ahead of Pete Alonso. So he's right there knocking on the door for a triple crown would be pretty cool haven't seen that in a long time uh, miguel cabrera the last one to do it i believe it was uh 2012 but been a while so that's pretty cool that's not something we see all that often and the cardinals have been red hot they're 18 and 5 in the month of august only six games against winning teams but still taking care of business like the braves did back in june so they are red hot right now and they've gone from three back in the NL Central at the beginning of August to six games up on the Milwaukee Brewers. So they have been on quite the streak and they are looking good for that NL Central division. So it should be a great test this weekend, a great matchup between the Braves and Cardinals. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for all the questions that were submitted. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen MLB podcast on the Locked On MLB podcast where uh, MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and talks about the biggest stories from around the league. Again, thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves, and you can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.